how did this, this production began in Chicago in 2012? Correct. How uh, different do you, what's changed? How has it changed? How has it changed? You tell me. I think it's better. I think it's better. I think it's better and I didn't see the other one. I do think it's better. Uh, certainly, uh, I mean, you know, it's a brilliant company of actors. I'll tell you what happens here that never happened, or never happened to me when I did it, and I think it has a lot to do with BAM and the BAM audience. Um, the soliloquy, uh, the uh, great speech in the fourth act, plays here to absolute silence. Real silence. No programs, no moving around, no gum popping. Just <laughs> silence. And uh, if one of us on stage moves, you can hear it. That's how silent it is. There can be no higher uh, and more important reaction from an audience in this play than that. And that's what he brings to it, and that's what he does every night. Well, you know, what I think is it's... Um, uh, this time around, I feel like I'm more in control, that I'm playing the play as opposed to the play playing me. Um, it's because it's, it is such an enormous task, and, uh, and obviously it has a lot, a lot to do with the, the fourth act, which is, is what, what separates the men from the boys. Um, you know, it is, it is a really, and it takes you places, and it changes. You know, when you're, if you're going to climb that mountain every night, you know, you don't always get to the top because your body and your psyche sometimes says, you know what, I went there last night. I'm not, I'm not going back down that dark alley. <laughs> you know, you go ahead if you want to. <laughs> but I'm staying here. And so sometimes you have to, you know, which is interesting because sometimes you have to get there a little more technically and sometimes you have to, it's interesting where that takes you as well. Um, and... It's been a, it's been really the, the high point of my career is to, to do this play and to, to play this role. It's, um, and, the, and, and you know, and there is always a kind of, as much as we love it, and I do love this play, I love this play like Scott loves Zelda, <laughs> but there is an ambivalence when you get here because you know where it is you have to go. And it's, and it's, it's, it's a real test, and it's, a, and it's painful. And you have to keep filling those reservoirs of pain for yourself to get there. And it's, it's fascinating, because when the, you know when you're in the zone, you know when it's working, because it's almost hallucinatory. And it takes you to places, things happen to you, as you're talking, and you know, uh, is this is an experience you hadn't had before? Well, I don't think there's anything there's anything like it, yeah. uh, other than maybe in Shakespeare. I mean, that's why they call him the American Shakespeare. It's I don't think there's anything like it, uh, you know, in dramatic literature. That's quite that where you talk for that long, where you basically tell the story of your life. And the thing is, he didn't plan on doing it. It's his own. He has to prove to them that he was right. And it's his own ego as well, but he has to, he, you know, he didn't go there, but he's turned himself in. He's told the police he's going to be there, and he's going to, going to turn himself in. But he's gone to see if, they, if, the, if the change that he's been hoping for has happened, and it hasn't, that he's, he's enraged and exasperated. And then finally, he has to say, look, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll show you what it did to us, to me and Evelyn. And... You know, and then along the way, he starts having these discoveries. These, you know, that he, you know, and then eventually he, obviously at the end, it's he reveals more than he, that he had even that he that he planned not not just that he planned to, but that he even I think remembered. Um, but oh, it's it's um, it is a there's I don't think there's anything <coughs> like it. I can't think of anything else quite like that. <laughs> 